Good morning. We are going to start talking about the properties of rectangles today. Um, yesterday you guys were asked to watch a review video about parallelograms and today we're going to talk about rectangles because before we left for remote learning we actually did the work on parallelograms and their general relationship uh, for properties of rectangles we want to remember opposite sides are congruent, opposite sides are parallel, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and diagonals bisect each other. Um, yesterday during the movie, uh, the movie, <laughs> the video, I had asked you guys to pause and answer this question in the Ed Puzzle, uh, but I asked, um, kind of like left these blank and had you fill them in. So I went through yesterday's answers and I tried to give you guys some feedback, but I just wanted to show you this today so that you remember. Uh, these are your general properties of your parallelograms. And then when we add in the fact that it's a rectangle, all four of your angles are going to be right and your diagonals are also going to be congruent. So this is going to be posted. This sheet is going to be posted so you'll be able to refer to it. I just want to run through a few things with you uh, because today we're going to add some algebra into the relationships. So when we're looking at this situation here, it says each quadrilateral is a rectangle, find the missing measure, and it's asking you to find the length of QR. So when you're looking at this, you know, QR, we want to remember that it's congruent to the opposite side. So this is pretty easy. You know, QR is going to be 10, SR is going to be 24. Then I need to find the length of SQ. And SQ is the length of this diagonal here. So you need to go back and use your Pythagorean theorem to be able to calculate that. And then once I know how long SQ is, if my diagonals are congruent because this is a rectangle, I can automatically know that PR is also going to be 26 because they're congruent. I don't need to do this twice. Now, if you don't remember the properties, you may have to work it out twice and that's okay. You'll start to see the relationship yourself. And once you do this a few times and realize you're getting the same answer, your brain is going to start to recognize that in this situation, they are completely balanced and they are congruent. Uh, so now you're going to find the length of QT and QT, you can see it here, is part of the diagonal. And then we remember that diagonals bisect each other and bisect means to cut them in half. So you know that this side is equal to that side. And that's how you get 26 divided by 2, which is 13. All right. This one's going to be similar. It's basically the same problem, you know, same situation worked out with different numbers. Number three looks at the angle measurements. And this one, for some reason, I have to give a little bit more thought to. So this is saying the angle M, J, K. So we want to find that M, J, K. So we're talking about this angle right here. We know that in rectangles, all of our angles are 90 degrees. So automatically it's 90. If I know that this part is 27, I would do what to find that part? And hopefully you guys said subtract. So 90 minus 27 is going to give you 63. Thinking back to the idea that this and this side are parallel, this becomes parallel lines cut by a transversal. So if this part is 27, So is that part down there. So when it comes to this question, how big, what is the measure of K M L? I'm going to be able to go in here and I'm going to say K M L. Well, I know that all of these are 90 degrees. So I can then say, all right, well, this guy's going to be 63 and this guy is 63. So then because of symmetry, because they're 90 degrees, I'm going to be able to say, this is 63, 27. And that's where I'm going to get KML from. And then MNL is going to be this angle right in here. 
So I need to figure out how I'm going to calculate that angle. Well, do you see that it forms a triangle? And how many degrees are in a triangle? So right now we've got a triangle that's 180 degrees. I don't know, I'm going to call that N, I don't know how big that is, but I do know that the other two angles are 27. So when I go through this, I'm going to add my 27 and 27, subtract it from 180, and that's where the 126 comes from. Okay, so I would recommend that you guys use this and see if you can replicate those numbers and figure out where they come from. All right, so basically this is what you're going to be repeating and repeating. And again, I'm going to upload this so you can see it, but I want to get into the algebra a little bit. So for the second part of this, you guys are going to be using those properties. You're going to be using opposite sides are congruent, the angles are 90 degrees. And this says, can you find the measure of EF? How big is EF? And EF is this piece down here. So you want to, you know, kind of go with, yes, it's the relationship, it's the properties, but like, you know, go with your gut. We're looking at it. We know that it's a rectangle. What's true about these two pieces? And hopefully you said equal or congruent. So that's where this is coming from. 7x minus 39 is going to equal 3x plus 5. So if I were color coding, just for kind of going back to the way we do things in class, you know, those pieces are congruent. So when I talk about 7x minus 39, because that's EF, then I need to say, since they're both pink, they will be congruent. Okay, and that's where that's coming from. Um, and again, now you're just going to go through the algebra. So taking a look here, RT is this diagonal. Well, what's true about the diagonals in a rectangle? They're both congruent. That's where you're getting the equal sign from. I know that JM, which is this piece here, and MK are congruent because the diagonals are congruent and they bisect, so that means all of these parts are congruent. So I know that if this side equals this side and the whole thing was congruent, all four of them are equal. And that's how I'm able to use this relationship to go in and find this one. There was one I wanted you guys to definitely look at. Oh, this one, there. number one. All right, taking a look at number 10 and number 11. We know that this is parallel to this. AB is parallel to DC. So by alternate interior angles, I know that this piece here, I'm going to try to make it yellow so you can see it, and this piece here should be congruent by alternate interior angles. So I'm able to write this equation here. I'm able to solve for x. And then I go back to find what the measure of B, C, E is. Because once I plug it in, I'm going to get 19 for this part, for the yellow. And then I need to subtract from 90 to get the other part. And then for number 11, it's asking me to find the measure of J, H, I. So you want to find J, H, I. We're looking for this piece up here. In order to do that, I need to use something down here. Well, I know that the whole entire angle J is 90 degrees. So I can say that this piece plus this piece is 90 degrees. I just use that to find X. So you guys are gonna run through the algebra on that. You're gonna find out what X is. But now I need to be able to figure out what this is. So again, we're gonna use alternate interior angles, except we're looking at the parallel going up and down. We're looking at this vertical parallel. So HI and GJ are parallel. Therefore, this is congruent to that piece. And that's where 3 times 7 plus 2 comes from, because I know that that's 23, which automatically makes this piece 23. All right, I'm going to let you guys play with this a little bit today. Oop.
I hope computer just went blank. I hope we didn't stop recording. Um, I am going to post this sheet plus your work so that when you're doing your work, you guys have this to look at. Um, if you have questions, please message me so that I can help you. And I hope you guys have a great day.